The aim of this video is to look at how entropy and information gain is calculated using probabilities so you can get a better understanding of how a machine algorithm might work. We have a data set here and what we want to be able to do is predict if somebody is going to default on their loan or not default on their loan based on a number of questions that would be asked on a loan application. Now existing data, well that data is known as training data. And using the training data, we want to build a model that will quickly and accurately predict whether somebody is going to default or not. And for this example, we're using entropy and information gain. Now entropy is the formula for entropy is minus P1 multiplied by log to the base of P1 minus P2 multiplied by log to the base of P2, where the P's are equal to probability. And that is a little bit complicated and we are going to quickly go through this calculation using Excel because it's very easy to understand with Excel. Let's just look at our default column, ignore the rest of the data set. If we wanted to, based on this data set, guess whether somebody is going to default or not default, well we would get the probabilities of defaulting or not defaulting. And we could do that using a count if statement. So let's count if in this particular range, we want to count with the criteria yes. So we want to know how many people defaulted and 10 people defaulted. Now if we use a count A, we can count all of the values because count A will count text. Now knowing this, our probability of defaulting is going to be 10 over 18 or it's going to be 55, 56%. So if we were to guess yes, 56% of the time, we, would be, we probably would be correct. But can we make this number more accurate? Is there any way by adding in more information that we can make a more accurate guess? Well, we're gonna look at this entropy calculation now and information gain calculation now. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to actually use Excel pivot tables. So I'm going to select my data and I'm going to say insert and I'm going to insert a pivot table. And I'm going to put it on the existing worksheet so we can see what we're doing. So we have our pivot table in here. And the first thing we're going to look at is calculating the entropy of the entire data set. And this is calculated as we see it here using our count function on the column in which you want to label. So we will be looking for the label in our machine learning algorithm. Is this person going to default or not default? So using the column that you wish to label is the column that you start your entropy calculation with. So we're gonna take default, our default column, and I am going to put it into my columns, and I'm going to take it again, and I'm going to put it into my values. And we can see quickly here that we have 10 people that default and eight people that don't default. Now, probabilities and pivot tables is quite easy. So I'm going to go to value field settings, show value as, and on my calculation, I am going to say of the row total. So now we have a percentage of our row total and we can see that 44% of people won't default and 55.56 of people will default. So these are our probabilities. So now that we have our probabilities, we can pull our probabilities into our entropy calculation. So let's copy our formula, so equals minus, and P1, so that's probability of one. Well, our probability of our first one is our probability of no, which is our 44%. So probability of no multiplied by, and we can use the log function in Excel, and that is log of probability of one to the base of two. And then we want our probability of two, so minus probability of our yeses to the log of our probability of the yeses to the base, again, to the base of two. I'm just gonna format that to number, and we can see that our entropy of this data set is 0.991. 
Now we learned in our theory that the closer to one that the entropy is, that the more there's more noise involved, there's more randomness involved in this because the probabilities are quite e they're not too far apart. Now to calculate, we can calculate the probabilities of our other items too. I am going to copy and paste that pivot table for the moment. And with that pivot table, I'm now going to add in an additional field. I'm going to add in the credit score. I'm going to rename this so I know what it is. So I'm going to rename it credit score. So now we have a credit score table and we have calculated our probabilities. So based on our probabilities, we can now calculate our entropy. Now this one is giving us a num error because we have a zero and a hundred. So when we have a num error, we can put in zero here. So we have calculated entropy for each line item here, but we need to calculate this for the overall credit score column. And each item within the overall credit score column is weighted differently. So we need to base these entropies on the weight of the occurrence in the actual column. So to do this, we can use our count and count if functions. So how many times does average appear? What proportion does average appear in credit score? What portion does below average appear and high appear? So we can use our count functions. And first of all, we will say count if, and we were going to count the range of credit scores. And our criteria is going to be our average. And then we're going to divide this by the count A, because count A will count text of the entire column. And that will give us the probability of average appearing. We can get the probability of below average appearing and we can get the probability of high appearing. And now if we multiply our entropy by each of these probabilities, and if we sum these values together, we now have the entropy for the entire column of credit score. So we can see that this is less than the entropy that we have had for the entire data set. But what is the information gain? Well, the information gain can be calculated by taking the entropy for the entire data set and deducting from that the entropy from the additional information. Now, as this number is smaller, it means that there's less randomness. So it means you have a better chance of guessing the probabilities knowing this information than if you only knew that information. And our information gain is 0.229. Now, for a machine learning model to actually work, this will have to be calculated for each item that you have a column of data for. And in the next video, we're gonna work through how this works in a machine learning algorithm.